When you get into photography, one of the first things you find out is that camera gear is expensive. But with the right approach and a little bit of planning, you don't have to break the bank or overspend to get all the camera gear that you need. So whether you're just getting started with your first camera or you already have a bunch of gear and you wanna get more, there's always a tendency, we wanna get more gear. We wanna get bigger stuff. We wanna get more expensive stuff. But it isn't always necessary to have the most expensive stuff and it's probably not a good idea to start out that way. My recommendation is always, especially if you're starting out, to start small and cheap. You know, get yourself a basic entry-level DSLR or mirrorless camera, crop sensor is fine, and the kit lens that comes along with it. You're better off starting spending $500 and growing from there. You know, even if you have a big budget to start out with, dropping 20 grand on a huge professional camera system really isn't gonna help you in the long run. And you'd end up wasting more money that way. You know, we're always tweaking our camera bag, the gear that we want, the gear that we need, based on you know our evolving styles or needs. And if you're starting with cheaper gear, a cheaper lens, a cheaper camera, you know, the resale value on something like that, for example, let's say you buy a $200 lens. And then after a year, you realize, you know what, you really need something else, a, a different focal length, or you need something more expensive than that. Well, the $200 lens, maybe you can trade in or sell for you know, 60 bucks or 80 bucks. So now you're losing out on $120, $130. Whereas if you had bought a $1,000 lens up front, well, maybe you can resell it for $400, $500 at the most. Well, now you're out four, five, six hundred dollars $600 on the more expensive lens, basically, you are already starting out way behind. So by starting out smaller and cheaper and realizing what you need, what you want, what kind of photography you're gonna be into, what your style is going to be, and then adding on gear based on that, you're gonna save a lot more money in the long run. Because take it from me, I have probably eight lenses right now and I've had probably 35 lenses over my lifetime. So there's always a lot of turnover in my bag. I'm always looking for something a little bit different, a little bit newer, more features, slightly different design. There's always something out there that is maybe gonna be more useful for what I need. You never buy that one expensive lens that's the lens that you're gonna just use forever. And starting out small, look, you know, you're not gonna have the pro-level DSLR body and the big giant zoom lens that you see the professionals using, but that's really not the place that you wanna start. You know, learning through adversity, especially in the arts, is a great way to learn and to grow. You know, learning how to get it done, learning how to make something work with the limited resources that you have is a great way to get creative. And in the course of doing that, you're gonna realize what other gear you might need, what other things you might wanna use in order to enhance the art that you're trying to create and in order to grow along with your own photography. So that being said, start small, get yourself a five or $600 kit and shoot every day. That's one of our number one recommendations here on this channel is be shooting every day, always be shooting. Take your camera out, even if you only have 10 minutes, take it into your backyard, take it down the block, just walk around, take some pictures. Just practice, 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 practice. Always be shooting. And in the meantime, immediately start putting money aside into a photography fund. Whether it's putting cash into an envelope or actually moving money into a another bank account that you call your photography bank account, $20 a week. After the end of the year, you have $1,000. And you might say, look, you know what? I don't have an extra $20 a week to spare. Well, look around. There's something where you can save, where you can save money, whether it's going out to eat one time less per week, or you have another hobby that maybe, you know, you're into photography more. If you're gonna get into photography and you're gonna commit to it, it's gonna be expensive. You're gonna have to commit to it. Maybe you're gonna have to give up something else in your life in order to be able to fully commit. So put that money away every week, $20 a week, $15 a week, $50 a week, whatever it is. And at the end of the year, you have $1,000, you have $2,000 sitting in that fund that now you can use for whatever the next thing is, whether it's a few new lenses or one new big lens. After a year or two of shooting with the gear that you have, now you know what you need. Now you've actually developed your skills, you've developed your creativity, you've developed your own shooting style, and you know a lot more precisely exactly what it is that you're gonna need to use. And look, along the way, if you make a few bucks here and there, uh, shooting portraits, doing some work, some product photography or something, and you get a few hundred bucks, put that in a photography fund also. Everything is gonna go into that fund. You're gonna save your money there. This way, when it is time to buy something new, the money's there waiting for you. But the investment up front, especially up front, is not gonna be in the gear, it's not gonna be in the camera body or in the lens or in the accessories. The investment is gonna be the time in learning. Learning the art of photography, learning your gear, how it works, and developing your own style and growing as a photographer. 
that's gonna be your investment up front. And in the course of doing that, like I said, you're gonna see what features you need. You're gonna see your camera body, what things that you wanna to try to be able to do that you're limited now by the camera body. It's not allowing you to do that. Rather than spending all the money up front with a bunch of stuff that you may or may not need and having everything at your disposal, which is gonna stifle your creativity, start with the basics and grow into what you need. You may find that you don't need a full frame camera or you don't need 40 megapixels or you don't need 1.4 aperture on all of your lenses. Depending on what you really need is the kind of gear that you're gonna to wanna to get. So find, figure out what it is that you need and don't need. Don't spend the money on stuff that you don't need or find ways to save on stuff that you really don't need as much. Spend more money on the stuff that you do need. And over time, you're going, your system is gonna grow, your camera bag is gonna grow, you're gonna grow into your system, your system is gonna grow into you together along with your shooting style and your own creativity. And you're gonna be much happier that way. And you're gonna save a lot more money in the long run by starting out small and only buying what you need when you need it. Speaking of saving money on actual expensive gear, I can't stress this enough, don't be afraid to buy used gear. We do it all the time. You save a ton of money as long as the quality is good and with reputable dealers, you can always rely on that. We buy a lot of used stuff from Adorama, from B&H, you can go online. They're very, very reliable. You can count on the ratings and everything. We've had no problem buying used gear from places like that. Go to your local camera shop, build a relationship with them. You know, they get used gear all the time. They can help you find things. Don't be afraid to buy used. You can save yourself a ton of money in the end. So plan, put money away, start out small and grow into your system. It's really the formula for getting all the gear that you need without overspending. So I hope that helps. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below. We love to hear from you. I'm gonna put up links here to some videos that we did related to gear and things like that, so you can check those out also. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.